Pusha Monster, this is the third in a mini series of videos that I'm making from games for children slash families that I picked up on Amazon recently because there were a lot of games by Queen Games that were available for very low prices and I hope they're still out there because most of these games that I picked up are very enjoyable. And Pusha Monster is a game for families slash children but really mainly children and really mainly on the on the low age side of things for really young kids. Push a monster uh, is pretty much what you imagine it will be. You push monsters on this little cliff here and if the monsters fall down the cliff then it's bad for you and good for the people. As simple as that. You have this cliff here, nicely made, nicely produced. You have these uh, monsters here, made of wooden pieces with stickers on them. Very thematic, good quality, nice and fun to manipulate. At the beginning of the game, you put these two purple dragons there on the on the cliff, and one of each other type of of monster. When it is your turn, you roll a die and the monster that comes out is the new monster that you have to add to the cliff. How do you do so? You take these two components here and you put the monster in any direction on the big piece of whatever, the monster pusher, that's the technical name of this tool, and then you simply use the other one to push the monster there. Once you put the monster on it, you cannot touch it anymore, although if it falls, you can put it back there and try again. Next player goes and next player tries to figure out a place to add a new monster without making any other monster fall. As you can imagine, after a while, monsters will fall. Uh, that's that's bound to happen sooner or later and usually sooner rather than later. I'm kind of surprised I was able to put three monsters there without making any fall. And when you put a monster there, it's not enough that it just stands on it, it has to be completely on the cliff, so no part of the monster that you add that must hang from the from the edge. I ah, so was able to do it. But sooner or later you want, so sooner or later some monsters will fall. When that occurs, when you make a monster or multiple monsters fall, everybody else gets a token of the corresponding monster. So, I made the Rhino Yeti fall and then every other player is gonna get one of these, these tiles and put them in there, in their scoring area. And then another player makes this thing fall, so I'm gonna get that one, another player still gets makes the, the troglodyte frog fall, so I get that one, and so on and so forth. And you place the tiles that you collect, so the tiles that you collect on there in a line in your scoring, in a in a line like that in your scoring area. The game continues until there is a time when a monster is rolled, the pool of that monster is depleted, and so you won't be able to add a monster that the die ask you to add, at that point the game is over. And how do you score points? Uh, easy. Uh, well, you don't have to count, you simply take all the ties that you scored, you put them in a line, and the player with the longest line is the winner of the game. Which seems like a gimmick, but when you're playing with a four-year-old, this is a very smart idea, because it introduces the idea that the monsters are not all of the same value, it introduces the idea of different scores uh, that needs to be added together for people that can't play, or that can't count, or for people that can't count, or that have a hard time. Boom! Visual and simple. You know you do not want to make the dragons, the, the purple dragon lizard with boxing gloves fall because those are pretty big and that means they're very good for the players. Because remember, this is the idea. Uh, when you make something fall, other people score. Everybody but you gets gets that monster. If multiple monsters fall, then everybody gets a tile for each type of monster that you, that you, um, that you cause to fall. So, super simple here, but it does introduce the idea that alas, if a monster has to fall, it's better if I push down a frog with that weapon rather than a dragon or this sort of like, I don't know, elephant, come bear, come platypus of sorts. 
and with a mohawk. They are cute monsters, by the way. So, uh, this is the game, as simple as that. Not exactly a dexterity game, although there is a component, and you're using these weird tools here, but that is really, I don't know, there is that element. It's more about spatial reasoning, about trying to figure out, like, a little puzzle. Can I stick this guy in there? And these two will move to the sides, and nothing bad will happen. Of course, it never really goes exactly like you planned that. So. Um, and then that kind of stuff happens. Hey, but it was a frog, so that's okay. So, uh, it's about reasoning, it's about that puzzle, and I wasn't sure that it would go all that well with my kids for one reason. Um, there are turns, many of them actually, when you're looking at the board and you know you'll make something fall, because it's just impossible. And once in a blue moon you do have a time, a case where it looks like something will fall, absolutely, there is no chance, and then nothing falls, and that's very exciting. Even people that they're not the active player will be cheering. Yeah, all right, because it's just fantasy that somebody was able to perform the mini miracle to stick a monster in a situation where it looked like there was no way of doing it. But that is rare. In most cases, when you look at a situation where it looks like something will fall, well, something will fall. And I wasn't sure that my kids would like it because I, usually kids don't like this idea of being doomed, like, ha ha, it's your turn and now you're gonna give me points. True, that happens, but first it happens enough that, oh, whatever, sooner or later, everybody has to have at least a turn like that. And when that occurs to you, there is still a decision that you had to make uh, which regards which one you're going to give. So this is still interesting because the fact that not all monsters are were the same uh, length, uh, the same number of points, then the game is still, well, it's about if possible, try not to make any monster fall, but if you have to, then try to figure out ways of pushing down the monster in the least, least valuable. For example, if this is my situation, I would like to figure out a way of making that one fall without pushing that one, because that one is not very valuable, but it's a little more valuable than a little more valuable than our annoying little frog. So now I have to try to figure out how to push that one down, uh, but that one is very precarious. So there is that element, and the two dragons are placed on the board at the beginning of the game. They're not represented by these tiles, so, but they're simply very valuable, so players will try not to make them fall. And in fact, I, have, I still have to see any of those two dragons hitting the table, which is fine, they still have their function of mm, forcing the players to work around that obstacle uh, so that the players do not give too many points to the opponents. Uh, one little detail, when there is this, when this symbol is rolled, I realize I forgot to mention, when this symbol is rolled, then you simply have to add to the board the monster of which there is the most still in the supply. So I have three of these yellow monsters, everybody's down to two, one, or zero, then I have to put the yellow monster. And if there's a tie, you choose. As simple as that, push a monster. Very simple, no, spatial reasoning with some dexterity game, with some really cute components, a fun, silly theme. The game doesn't even try to say why you are tried, you had to push the monsters, at least they're not coming up with those fake justifications like you are a zoo keeper of a zoo for monsters and you're passing a qualifying exam to demonstrate that you can fit out of monsters. It's just like, it's a game, you're gonna die, you push a monster on the cliff and see that you do not make everybody anybody fall if you can. Silly idea, silly theme, but it looks great, the kids like it, and it's it's a really small, simple, fun game. I wouldn't call it a filler, because it's not the kind of game that you play with adults and there's a filler, as opposed to something much more complex that you would play. This is clearly a game for kids, and for kids it doesn't have to be a filler, it can be like the main course of a game session. But it doesn't overstay its welcome, it keeps uh, people interested, it pe keeps people excited because you want to see what other people do, uh, especially because when other people are acting, you may score. So that is that the, the, fun, the fun thing. I'm taking my turn and you're excited because I may give you points. So the, everybody feel, is engaged, it's competitive, but there's a certain silliness to it that even my four and my six year old uh, daughters really enjoy and they haven't felt the competitiveness at all. It's mechanically competitive, but psychologically, it's just so fun to see um, these monsters moving around and collecting tokens that I almost feel like you know winning or losing has felt secondary. My four year old doesn't always 
like losing games. I mean, who does? But I just say that her reactions are sometimes more hmm, forceful than you would have from other players, including young players. But this game uh, is just so light and enjoyable that actually she enjoyed playing it, even if she has lost several times. Uh, she, losing hasn't been traumatizing when she lost Push a Monster like it has been in other games. So Push a Monster, not a masterpiece in any sense in general, uh, but for a game that you play with young kids, four, five, six year olds, then definitely a good game. See if you can pick it up a copy. There's still copies out there available for low prices because I don't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but I'm happy I got it because I think it was like 10 or 20 dollars tops and we have played already quite a bit with it. So my uh, four-year-old has showed it to her friends and they've also enjoyed it. So definitely a game that young kids will enjoy.